June standing at the at the bow as the boat plows on into the night. Um, and elsewhere on the deck, Moira and Una are uh, are having a pretty heady conversation. Yeah, this isn't great. I mean, like June can hear them fighting. And you can hear Una say, you you don't think I've had to leave anyone behind. And it continues. And I'm like, yeah, Una, I, I get that you've had to leave somebody behind. But what I'm not getting here is that you have experienced the level of fuckery that these two have. And, and why you need to just grant Moira a little fucking grace here. You know, just because, like, I understand that Moira's story and June's story are just like everybody else's. But this is the person you care about. Like, just cut her a break. But it doesn't matter because apparently there's not going to be an office after this anyway. And at first I thought, like, oh, Moira's fired? Did she not only just break up with Moira, but she fired her <laughs> That's too? That's what I thought too. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's, that means that, like, their NGO is, like, basically imploding. Like, it's yeah. done. <laughs> I definitely thought the same thing. I was like, yeah. wow, that's a bad right? day. Well, right? Especially with that line of like, let's not make this last longer than it has to. It was like, right? Like that coupled Ooh. on there, there will be no office. I, I read it exactly the same way at first. So I was okay. like, good God. I was like, you break up with her and you fire her in the same Ooh. sentence. Una, you Ouch. are cold. Right. Uh, but no, obviously the implication there is that, um, that once they, I uh, once they land back, that's it. There will be no more relief missions from or, uh, courtesy of Sarah. It would have been wonderful for Una to grant Moira a little bit of levity, but also like Moira did put put Una into this very precarious situation and having to make this decision. And I'm always going to be Team Moira, always. always. But like, I can understand at this moment why Una is is feeling broken up about this because, like, she and Moira had a conversation on the dock and then Moira immediately goes, I goes against, I goes against that conversation, puts Una into this dangerous and uh, at worst and trepidatious situation at best situation. Um, and, you know, I mean, Una kept her shit together as well as she could while, uh, while they were in the galley trying to determine what to do with June. But, I mean, she's allowed a breaking point, too. And she's allowed to understand, like, look at this and be like, June is more important to you than I will ever be, which I think is an unfair evaluation um, because, like, for fuck's sake, this is Moira's best friend from college. Like, of course she's going to pick her. But, like, I get in the heat of the moment why Una would be a little bit, like, would be would be hurt about that. Hmm. I don't, I don't think Una's – I don't think it's the right choice. I don't think that Una – has, really has a I don't think that Una is right but I think that I can understand why she felt like this <laughs> so I think Una's right in just about all of it except for the fact that she's not granting Moira any grace in the situation in terms of this has to be incredibly unique like this isn't just like Moira has this bleeding heart yeah. And just grabbed the first refugee she could and disobeyed her because how could she leave someone behind when she had an opportunity to grab them? I mean, she found June. Like, uh, like could we just, like, for one second just be like, I get it? Like, she should just get it. Like, I, the way that I get why she didn't want her to come and why this fucks everything up and why they've broken up yeah. and they've broken they've lost their job like i get all of una's frustration except for like the sliver of grace that she needs to afford the uniqueness of this situation yeah. like this like she makes it sound like it's something she has to do every time she comes there and yes to some extent she has to leave people yeah. behind but she doesn't have to leave her single most important person that she has in Gilead uh -huh. behind. Whose child she is currently, yeah. you know, enjoying custody of. And living with her husband. Like, I mean, yeah. this person that they've all thought is as good as dead is just landed in her arms. Like, how could, what else is she going to do but what she did? That's just, I mean, what else is she going to do? Of course, there is no other choice that Moira can make. Like, literally and truly, I think the only thing that we or that could have happened in this scene um, to make Una a bit more um, 
to kind of like give us a bit more of like a, a bit more sympathy towards Una is if instead of just saying like you think I haven't had to leave someone behind give us a name give us a re- our relation give us something so that way we can see like I had to leave my brother-in-law behind and he was banging on the fe- like he was trying to climb over the fence and I had to make that decision something like that because then at least like we could say she had at least gone through a fraction of like the pain and like suffering and everything else that like Moira and June have gone through yeah, yeah. it's just like there's that logical choice but then there's that intense emotion when you're in that moment that is just going to override whatever logic could be applied to the situation and una is so logical in this situation when it's like her and moira have enough of a relationship that we've seen where there should be some emotion applied to this situation and on top of that it's june fucking osborne Like, this is not just any person. Like, she is the most wanted fugitive right now. Like, yes, I understand why that also is the massive problem, but it is the conundrum that they're in of this is a a much bigger problem on a grander level right now for everyone involved, including Moira, who had to make an impossible choice and made the only choice she was ever going to make. Of course. Absolutely. This makes June feel incredibly guilty. As we then see after uh, after this fight, um, where Una and Moira break up, um, Moira goes to June's quarters to talk to her, presumably to find some sort of comfort, maybe like just discuss what's going to be uh, happening next. And June's quarters are empty. She is. Yeah, if I were Moira, I'd be panicked too because <laughs> June is a flighty bitch. I would not trust her. I'd be like, oh God, she's swimming. She's swimming already. <laughs> That's um, what I thought. And yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, this chick was busy untying a lifeboat to escape. I admire the shit out of her tenacity. Moira has to talk her off the ledge again. And I, I mean, I love... I love Moira's strategy here. I didn't bring you all this way to leave you behind. Like, yes, yes, let's not make Moira feel like everything that she's done is completely futile, June. Like, let's let's start there. But June, um, she is not here to re- listen to reason. I mean, when she says, you tricked me into leaving my daughter. No, she didn't, June. But I understand why you would see it that way. And... Um, when she launches into, or why she can't leave, that's what broke me up. This is yet, I don't know, part 72 of the time where I cried big, fat, globulous tears because now they're really like spelling it out for you. Yes. Yes. I didn't, I got every other kid out except for my kid. And I, it killed me when she's like, not my Hannah, that she didn't have her Hannah. That done, completely done. Um, I'm her mother and it's my job to protect her and I failed. Like, there you have it. This is why June stayed spelled out for Moira and for everybody else who is like, why is she still doing this? For all the season two finale haters. Jesus tap dancing Christ. If I have to listen to one more ridiculous like tweet or like message about how they put too much focus on June, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. (laughs) It's the Handmaid's Tale, and she's the handmaid. <laughs> kind wow. of the star of the show. It's kind of the point. She is our protagonist. Did you think that we were going to start, like, a you know, a series with not having her in it? Like, what is going on, people? Like, move on. It's okay. <laughs> she gives us a monologue every episode. We are in her head yes. every episode. We don't get monologues from anyone else. It's June and her story and her perspective that we follow through this entire uh-huh. tale. Yes. It's literally all about June and you're not going to get anything different. And I'm fine with that because Elizabeth Moss is fucking awesome in this series. And she's fucking awesome in this scene. And can we please give her an mm-hmm. Emmy? Thank you very much. Yeah, this um, this was a heart wrenching scene because you have Moira saying, "I'm not gonna force you to stay. I just want to know, like, why, why won't you stay?" And it harkens back to like we've it 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 makes you realize that like Moira is Moira won't let go without a fight, but she needs to know what the fight is. Um, 
And June just lays it on thick. Like, I don't have her. I tried. I did everything I could. It wasn't enough. I was supposed to save her. And all of these pressures that she put on her, uh, that she put on herself, um, that we don't see any of the other handmaids having put those same pressures on themselves, um, save for Janine, um, because they don't have the proximity to their children. And with June, it's just been a constant in her face. Like the, the carrot has been dangled in front of her so long that like, how can that not cause a person to psychologically and emotionally snap? Um, Lest we forget who is dangling that carrot. Serena and Fred, yep, thank you very right. much. Yep. You know, it's not just the dangling of the Hannah carrot, too. It's the fact that June knows what Hannah is going to be facing in a few short years. Mm-hmm. I don't think that once um, June got out of that bottle episode, there was any way that she could go besides just full on doing whatever it takes to, if she can't get Hannah out, then to get every other kid out that she possibly could. Mm -hmm. It's like her own way of, of redemption, redemption, because she, in her eyes, views herself as a failure as a mother because she couldn't save her own kid. She hasn't been able to, her kid has been put in danger because of her. Yeah, it was interesting in this scene because up until this point like when she first went up to the lifeboat when we find her up on the lifeboats I'm still thinking that she's really operating under that like stubborn charge ahead at all costs I'm not leaving without Hannah I still thought she was dealing with a lot of the like realization that she's also left Janine and hasn't really figured out what may or may not have happened to her. And I thought she was really operating under more of the guilt that we had been talking about. That was, and plus, you know, all the physical issues and the concussion. Um, And it was this scene that really kind of slapped me in the face with, obviously we know that Hannah's the reason that she stayed, but it had not occurred to me how afraid she was to go home without her until this scene with Moira because it was so perfect that within this reunion it is Moira that is going to be the person that she's going to open up to and and unload those fears that she's been carrying around for who knows how long because it never really quite occurred to me that that was also weighing in on any of those decisions any of those times that she didn't go to Canada because she was afraid to go without her um I, you know, I guess we get it to an extent, like obviously it was the guilt and leaving her child, but I never really thought about it as showing up empty handed. And that's definitely a, what is scaring her as the shore comes closer and closer and she's getting more and more frantic of, I can't do this. And then coupled with the flashbacks of Luke, it was just, it was, I, it was all really interesting because I just hadn't seen that aspect of it until it was slapped me in the face here. Yeah. She puts a tremendous amount of pressure on herself. And Moira points that out by saying uh, they're waiting for a person, not a superhero. Like, it's when it's funny when you're on the inside of it, you can't understand just how bad it is. On the outside, any rational person can see that there's no fucking way that she's going to be able to come back with that kid. The fact that she just got out is a miracle. Asking for the kid to be strapped to her back as she makes it over the border is an impossibility. That is damn near impossible. I think what really messes June up is the fact that she was able to get everybody else's kid out but hers because she monumentally fucked that up for herself but she didn't actually she didn't it's Gilead but it was her actions that facilitated you know Hannah basically poofing out of existence for a little bit and then showing up in that box it's fucking awful it That is, that's just not fair. That's a big mind fuck for her. And I hope, because I hope moving forward, I mean, obviously we, we don't know at this point, like we've said, we're very much in literal uncharted territory as we plunge through this ocean here. And if we go off the Testaments, we know that there's a lot more of this Handmaid's Tale that we have no idea about. And 
whatever she arrives at on that shore is only going to be just the next step in a very long story of the next 15 years. And I think with the guilt that she has in that, just the reality of the situation, if she had played her cards differently in season two, when she had more opportunities but didn't realize what opportunities were right in front of her, that she could have had Hannah out. And that's going to weigh on her moving forward. But it also taught her how to rein it in a little bit. Like we, we've seen her realize that there needs to be more foresight. And that was a long journey of season three of June trying to figure out when to act and how to act to enact smart changes and also be effective. Like it's not that she's timid. We've seen her plow ahead with her ideas, but there's still planning involved that there wasn't when she was merely operating on any opportunity and chance and being shuffled around through season one and season two and she was learning and I'm just wondering at this point as she heads towards Canada what is going to await her in terms of fighting Gilead because I just obviously I don't think she's done like I don't think she's just gonna have the same Canadian refugee story that we've seen with other characters when they land there which is obviously ancillary and not much right no I agree with you she can't either like how do you how do you squash that flame that's been ignited in her um and how do you how do you satiate a woman who who has had their entire family ripped asunder um and has had has had their child like util I used against them as a pawn um in this like psychological warfare like that's not something that just fades into obscurity so i am inclined to agree with you that uh we've uh, we've not seen the last of her fight um something else about this scene though that really does it for me is that as she's saying like how can i face luke moira moira goes to bat for luke which is such a lovely shift from the uh, from the uh, from the flashback because in the flashback, um, Moira was, to put it politely, apprehensive of Luke's intentions, um, and was not exactly keen on her uh, best on her best friend marrying this man. And here, Moira goes full tilt in on Luke, and like all these years, he has waited for you and he has never given up on you, and it's time for you to have a little faith. And it's just such a lovely full circle that. Moira now gets or gets to see what June saw all along, and June now sees what Moira saw in that moment, or in that moment when uh, she was originally showing that hesitation. Um, but I, I, I love, love, love that. Like we've discussed in the past, the tenuous relationship at best that Moira and Luke have, and to see Moira just go, without a shred of doubt go to bat for Luke, um, it shows a depth of their relationship that, like that. They've obviously fostered an amazing kinship um, in the time that they've been in Canada. Agreed.